welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and like the video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more content. Thank you for watching. Okay, so this is going to be the first of many requests. This one just so happens to be requested by Sleep Deprived Insomniac. So this is a Sukiya Makagi Hina Angst with a Happy Ending and Kagiyama just so happens to be our victim. With that being said, trigger warnings, mentions of death, self-harm, abuse, blood. So please, proceed with caution. What is it like feeling the air become your enemy? What is it like when your own lungs betray you and leave you stranded? How does it feel watching the lights multiply as your vision begins to fade? What is it like to stop breathing? Kageyama can answer those questions with a truthful answer as he laid on the gym floor, chaos resuming around him. His lovers were screaming at him that he couldn't make anything out, and Yukai was above him, his lips moving, but nothing more. What is it like dying with unspoken words? That, that was what urged him to stay. His eyes shifted over to his lovers. Hinata was thrashing around, sobbing hysterically while being held back by Tsukushima, who was barely keeping it together himself, and Yamaguchi fell into his knees, crying into his hands. And all because he couldn't confess a secret. How all of this could have been avoided if he had just talked. What a pitiful regret. Even with the answers, he wouldn't be able to give a response, fading deep into the darkness his chest desperately ached for. Peace was granted whenever he was far from home, and that was where he was far from. In fact, it had been a simple mistake falling asleep in his lover's arms. However, an unintentional sleepover was what they needed. He shifted in bed, glancing at Tadashi, who was still fast asleep. He smiled at the latter, his freckles seeming to become more vivid in slumber. It was the only time he didn't get flustered since Tsukishima and Hinata liked to tease the hell out of him every second they could get. While he did participate with them before, now he chose not to, cherishing the moments he could see them every chance he got. As much as he wanted to stay there, he needed to get up before Miwa noticed his absence. He groaned sitting up. The sun wasn't even up yet, but he needed to get home. He stood, feeling the grip around his waist tighten, holding him down. He whipped his head around, seeing Tsukishima behind, trying to bring him back down. He looked so adorable, still asleep with his glasses sitting crooked on his face. Okay. He whispered in a hushed tone, trying not to wake the other two. The bong groaned, opening his eyes. Okay, let go. He tried again now that this time he was awake. Where are you going? He grumbled in a husky voice with sleep still present and made his stomach do black flips every time he heard it. A soft rosy pink dusted his cheeks. I need to go home. He raised his head, adjusting his glasses properly and looking at the time. Tobio, it's three in the morning. I know, I told my sister I would be home. We just kind of fell asleep. He grumbled again, sitting up in bed with the covers falling from his chest. Tsukishima walked over to the closet and rummaged through it, pulling out two hoodies. He tossed one to Kageyama and threw the other one over his head. What are you doing? The latter raised his eyebrow, running his hands through his hair to attempt to rid himself of bedhead, yet padded, seeing it was pointless. I'm going with you, of course. What? No, you're- Tobio, it's 3am. You're not walking home by yourself. He groaned in frustration, wanting to throw a tantrum like a little kid, but stopped himself, not wanting to wake up Hinata or Yamaguchi. Fine, but you're not coming inside. 
The middle blocker narrowed his eyes, but walked out of the room with the ladder following. They walked in relative silence, hand in hand. He silently thanked the toddler for the hoodie, not thinking how cold it was getting this late in the year. The night left shivers down his spine, yet the warmth and calming scent of the hoodie made him feel as if he were in front of a fireplace. It made it all the more better that he was standing directly next to the source of comfort. He almost hated himself for waking up. Maybe he would have continued sleeping in that warm bed with all three of his lovers there, assuring security and safety. He wanted to turn back, but already saw that he was in front of the door of his home. He glanced over towards Tsukishima, feeling guilty for dragging him all the way out there so late at night. I'm so- Don't apologize. He smiled softly, interrupting him before he could finish apologizing, his hands rubbing the sides of Kagiyama's arms to keep him warm. But it's late, and I... Like I said, I would rather know you made it home safely. I do this a million times over, if that's what it takes. It happened again. His legs felt like jello, and his heart skipped a beat. He really was head over heels for him. I really love... He was interrupted when the front door was swung open abruptly, nearly knocking them both off of the porch. He met the eyes of his furious sister. Scratch that. The deranged look in her eyes meant she was livid. Miwa. She swung her hand back, slapping him harshly across the face, the impact making him stumble onto the side of the railing before he was yanked back by the hair. She had his raven hair in clumps by her strong grip. What did I tell you about disobeying me? I'm sorry. Tsukushima stood there in shock. Was this the same kind woman he met many times before? It wasn't until he heard Kakiyama's small words that he stumped out of his trance, the look of shock quickly replaced by fury grabbing a hold of her wrist. Let go. Miwa swung back around, nearly making Kagiyama walk into the doorframe, still immobilized by her iron-strong grip. His scalp felt like tiny embers were igniting all at once. Tsukushima used his other hand to hold Kagiyama steady so he wouldn't fall into anything. Who are you again? It wasn't too hard to miss a small booze from her. Even her words slurred together with malice he's never heard of before. Let go of him. He repeated once more, seeing Ren, feeling the smaller tremble underneath his touch. One sniffle from him was all it took to know he was crying. Or what? What the hell are you going to do about it? She whipped her arm around, slinging Kagiyama onto the ground in the house. He is my property, so what are you- he is no one's property. He yelled in anger, never feeling so enraged before. If he still bared any sleep from prior, his rage dissipated it to nothing. How could someone even think that? He glanced over his lover on the ground, his deep blue eyes filled with terror. How could someone treat him like that? Someone so perfect. It made his heart burn like someone had ripped it out squeezing the life from it until all that remained was ash. I'm calling the police. She tensed, finally understanding what power he did hold. Give him back, or I'm calling the police. This was abuse. He couldn't let her do this. Who knows how long this has been happening. She stepped away from the door, glaring at her little brother. Her stare was enough to send piercing dagger Sue's way. Go. He was still so scared he couldn't move. If it wasn't for Tsukushima pulling him up from the ground, he probably never would have moved. Hearing the door slam shut behind, he crumbled to his knees, letting his tears fall freely. He flinched under his lover's touch. Tsukushima immediately backed up and went in front of him, crouching on the ground. You... 
You weren't supposed to see that. The blonde's heart clenched, hearing how broken he sounded. He wanted nothing more than to hold him, yet didn't want to make him uncomfortable. He saw his cheek was red and wilting, seeing a small scratch from her ring drawing blood. Come on, we need to get you home and we can talk then. He nodded his head, not finding the cold to his liking. The walk home was silent, not silent like before. This was unsufferable with tension in the air. They were both surprised to see Yamaguchi and Hinata awake with worry etched into their features, and only increased seeing Kagiyama in his state with puffy, tear-stained eyes, and his cheek bruised and bleeding. Yamaguchi ran to get the first aid kit, nearly running into the wall bringing it back to them. The setter flinched back from him, approaching closer. Can I touch you? I just need to patch you up, is that okay? It took several moments until I shook his head not uttering a sound. They all saw Tsukushima leave to wake his older brother to talk about getting the police. While he did say he wouldn't if he got the smaller back, she shouldn't get away with doing that to him. Besides, it wouldn't save him next time. Once Yamaguchi finished applying the medicine, he got up, but got held back by the setter who grabbed his wrist. Don't go. His words were small, yet had enough emotion to kill Yamaguchi a thousand times over. I'm not going anywhere. He sat back down, holding the raven close, saying that it was okay now. He must have got the first day to put it back before history repeated itself and both of them were holding Kageyama, comforting him. Do you want to go to the bed? He nodded his head, holding both of their hands in his, walking up the stairs into the bed, holding them both, seeking their comfort. It was nearly half an hour later until Tsukushima came back into the room, sighing and popping onto the bed. Hey, Tobio? His hand found his waist, rubbing his side gently. Hmm? Do you want to live with us for a bit? I talked to my brother about it, and it's fine. Kageyama turned around, staring deeply into his honey amber eyes. But my sister... Akatoto is going to the police station tomorrow morning. We just didn't want you to get overwhelmed with the police questioning you. But... Tobio... I don't think I could sleep at night, knowing you were over there. I don't feel safe with that. The other two shifted over as well. We don't either. How long has this been happening anyways? We didn't even know. He was silent for a long time, almost too long. Hinata nodded his head, thinking he just got ignored, but turned hearing his voice. Since... Since my grandfather died. Since middle school. That's the only thing they were able to get out of him. Eventually, they gave up and fell asleep. The gym never felt so foreign to him. They were at a practice match with Shiro Torizawa, Kagema as a starting setter with Shoyo acting as his decoy, and Tsukushima and Yamaguchi sitting on the bench. Yet, he wasn't in the right headspace. His cheek felt inflamed, specifically where his sister's ring cut him, and it seemed to pulse underneath his bandage, distracting him from his sets. But that wasn't the only thing. It was his mind. A million voices yelling at him, running at an unbearable pace. He was everywhere but on the court. It wasn't until he heard screaming that he snapped back into reality, but it was already too late. Uchijima had spiked down a killer toss from Shiribu, using his left hand when he zoned back into the game. He didn't have time to deflect his hit when it nailed him straight into the chest, so hard that it knocked the air out of him. He fell to the ground, 
gasping for air, yet it never came. His hand clenched onto his chest, feeling something move underneath his touch in an agonizing throat form. He coughed, sending his pain levels through the roof, still not managing to breathe. It was like a piece of food got lodged in his throat and he couldn't breathe, except his airways were fine. He just couldn't breathe. Hinata was right above him, tears falling onto him, seeing the Sarah's face turn purple from lack of air and the haze filling his vision. He was pulled back by Tsukushima when Yukai took his place. Kid? Realizing he was unresponsive and not breathing, he cursed, yelling at Takara to get an ambulance, standing above him and began performing CPR. Just because he was alive didn't mean it wasn't needed. It aided with oxygen blood flow. It would at least do until help arrived. Kid, stay with us. Yet it all numbed into nothing. This was what he wanted, right? All Kakuyama wanted was peace, away from his world of torture, but looking at his lovers from afar, he realized that this was only a different form of torture. I'm sorry. And for once, those voices didn't speak. Warmth engulfed his body. That's odd. Wasn't death supposed to be... colder? He forced his eyes open, only to shut them back closed, seeing a bright light nearly blind him. He tried again, but this time at a much slower pace, giving himself time to adjust to the light. The warmth he felt was from his hands. Sure enough, his lovers were there, unmoving, encased in their own slumber. What happened? He felt a pang in his chest, a painful reminder that he went up against Ushijima and lost, miserably. Tobio! He turned his head, seeing the redhead nearly trip over Tsukishima, running up to him from the doorway, his meat buns long forgotten. How are you? Does anything hurt? The other two woke up, hearing the older's burst of questions, relieved to see that he was awake. Why am I alive? If Hinata were still talking, he knew he would have choked on his words at the question. What do you mean? Ishidima didn't hit you that hard. He laughed jokingly. Of course you're alive. Yeah, he didn't laugh at the joke, or even look up from the thin hospital sheets that left his body cold. Tobio? The setter took his hand back, ridding himself of the only warmth provided. What's wrong? He still, seeing his shoulders shake while he held his face away from the world, away from them. You don't... understand. Then talk to us. Make us understand. We will only be kept in the dark if you don't talk. Hinata walked over to the foot of the bed, his hand resting firmly on his shin. Please. He took a few breaths to calm down, each one aching his chest. I... I was relieved. I was relieved that I was dying. Tsukushima almost felt his throat swell, like suddenly he was the one that got striked in the chest. Do you know what it's like? I want to live, but I want to die as well. He stayed silent, not daring to look up, scared to see their horrified looks. Miyawa always blamed me for my grandfather's poor health and even his death, since I was too much to handle growing up. Years, she was like that. I wanted to escape. I tried. 
tried leaving before, but after many failed attempts, I thought that death was the only option for me. His neck strained, so he trained his look to the ceiling, laying back down, letting his tears escape the corners of his eyes. He expected one of them to get angry and interrupt him already, yet they stayed silent and listened. I tried it before, you know. It was whenever we just met, actually, but I, I couldn't do it. always been scared of dying, so once I was actually there, dying, I thought maybe it wasn't so bad, and I accepted it. My only regret was leaving you. I remember seeing you at the gym. You looked so hurt that at the end before I blacked out, all I felt was fear. He bit his lip, ripping the chapped skin from it with his teeth hearing the three of his lovers trying to hide the fact that they were crying as well. He stayed silent, not having anything more to say. Do you still feel that way? Do you still want to die? His voice cracked, finally understanding the pain the sitter had endured for so many years. The raven glanced at him, shaking his head with more tears spilling. No! Tsukushima immediately engulfed him into a tight hug, so tight that he were afraid he would disappear if he were to let go. Please, promise us you'll tell us if you ever feel that way again. We can help you. I promise we will find someone who will. Just... Please, don't leave us. He sobbed, crying into the sheets. That did little to nothing to absorb any of their tears. I promise I'll try my best. I just... My sister. Don't worry about her. You can still live with us. It's okay. He finally let go with the hug, ridding the center of his tears by brushing them off. He went to speak, yet got interrupted by the door to his room, opening after a knock. Oh good, you're awake. Sorry to interrupt, but how are you feeling? He sniffled, rubbing his face already exhausted from all of the crying. Sore. Really sore, but fine, I guess. What even happened? It looks like the hit did your sternum in. It's very common for kids your age who do sports. It seemed to break your sternum, so you'll be experiencing soreness and shortness of breath. It will take a few weeks to heal, so you will unfortunately have to take a temporary leave from your sport. He tapped on his clipboard. Then why couldn't I breathe? Like at all. We suppose it was just the way it broke. The bone kept constant pressure there, making you unable to breathe. You sure do have a good coach. Without him, you surely would have been dead. The mention of death made him go pale and nauseous, trying to overcome that fear. Yamaguchi seemed to have noticed and rubbed his hand on his thigh, distracting him from those haunting images. Thank you, sir. Do you know when he can be released? We'll keep him overnight, just to be on the safe side. After a short checkup tomorrow, you will all be free to take him home, after having an adult sign some release papers. Tsukushima made a mental note to text his brother to pick them up. The doctor took his leave, leaving them in their silence. Kageyama looked over at the redhead, who never stopped crying. He chuckled, opening his arms for him. Come here, stop crying. I'm okay now. He scurried over the bed, nearly digging his knee into his thigh before plopping into his arms, careful of his chest. He laughed, seeing the other two decide to pile on top of Hinata, poking at his cheeks, who still held a pout. Somewhere along the way, by mere coincidence, those three boys had became his purpose to keep going. 
At first, he never truly feared death. What had stopped him from making his reckless decision was them. Because of them, he found his reason to keep going and to live. Yeah, so there's your inks with happy ending. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you'd like to be caught up to date, check out any of my social medias. I hope that you all have a wonderful day or evening.